Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater. Starring Margaret O'Brien, Lionel Barrymore, Louis Stone, and Edward Arnold in Three Wise Fools. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. If when you're sitting at home some quiet night, alone, you suddenly hear a sound like this. Have you ever wondered what makes that gate unwind? Could it possibly be those little people, the leprechauns and the fairies whom we never see? Oh, uh, you don't believe in them, eh? Well then, let's see what happens to three skeptics like yourselves in Metro Golden Mayor's Three Wise Fools, based on the play by Austin Strong, originally produced by John Golden. We are fortunate in having all four stars from the original fine cast. Margaret O'Brien, Lionel Barrymore, Louis Stone, and Edward Arnold. Margaret appears as a little Irish girl who moves into the home and heart of three hard-hearted disbelievers. Disbelieving, that is, in those same little people who are known to inhabit the bogs of Ireland. And speaking of Ireland, we have a letter forwarded by a youthful member of the Red Cross. It's from a pupil in a school near Dublin and says in part, words cannot express how grateful we were for the welcome presents that he sent. The teacher let us pick what we liked, and I chose a cake of luck soap and a storybook. Well, I'm sure that boys and girls in Ireland, as in other lands, appreciate the packages the Junior Red Cross sent, and especially their kindness and discrimination in including luck soap. Here's Act One of Three Wise Fools. Starring Margaret O'Brien as Sheila O'Monaghan, Lionel Barrymore as Richard Gaunt, Louis Stone as James Trumbull, and Edward Arnold as Theodore Kinsley. Many years ago, three young students, a doctor, a banker, a lawyer, each was desperately enamored of the beautiful Lena Fairchild. But suddenly, Miss Fairchild fell in love with a stranger, a dark man from Ireland, so full of song and poetry that she agreed to run away with him. The three suitors discovered the eloper, and so violently did they threaten the stranger that he turned in his saddle to curse them. I am the O'Monaghan, who's broken bread with kings and sung before queens, and this is my curse. I... No. No, not a curse. I'll make it a blessing. Gentlemen... While Rena and I are in Ireland, may all your lofty dreams come true. May you... Richard Gaunt. May you be the famous man of medicine. And you, James Trumbull. And you be the high and mighty lawyer you set your heart upon. And you, Theodore Finley. May you get your million dollars, your glittering ton of gold. And may you go side by side on a wide, smooth road. In the name of the one-horned witch of the bog of our beach, it's focused. Forty years went by, and the three disappointed suitors had become three old bachelors. Theodore Findlay had acquired his ton of gold. Richard Gaunt became a famous doctor, and James Trumbull a high and mighty lawyer. But with it all, they hadn't acquired one true friend. And so it was that the three old bachelors contemplated the doing of a gracious deed. I still say it's ridiculous. Giving away a piece of property worth $50,000 just because you two are worried about how many carriages will be at your funeral. And how many do you think you have at yours? So, we're making this magnificent gesture because the people of this community hate me. Is that it, Dr. Gaunt? Why, they love you, Ted. That's why they call you Squeeze of Penny Kinder. Oh, now, stop arguing, stop arguing. If we can buy a little goodwill with a gift, it's a bargain. And to whom will we give the property? The university, of course. For years, they've wanted that land to build a Greek candy theater. We get some wonderful publicity in the newspaper. Yes, Paul Badger owns the newspaper, and Paul Badger hates that. Well, now, speak for yourself. Well, you were the one who dispossessed his mother 25 years ago. I'm a businessman. Well, then, as a businessman, shut up. 
Jim, uh, get in touch with the president of the university. I'll get a hold of Badger, and they can both come here tomorrow. Well, is there anything I can do? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. You can go to the vault in that bank of yours and bring us the deed for the land. The deed of the old Fairchild estate. Well, have you seen today's newspaper? <laughs> Leading citizens give university old Fairchild estate. Well, now we can be proud of ourselves. This time won't forget us and I. I, uh... What is it, Frederick? Excuse me, gentlemen, but a little girl and the man are calling. They they look like immigrants. Immigrants? Well, send them away. Well, who could they be? Who are you, little girl? Kilo Manahan. And there's not a cottage nor a castle in all Ireland. There's not any down in Scotland. Oh, Monaghan, did you say? Yes, sir. Granddaughter of Michael, the O'Monaghan. Well, well, what? It's it, it, Rena Fairchild's granddaughter. And then look at this man, will you? What happens to me, sir? Mm. The Omanahan servant, man and boy, for 50 years. Well, where's your grandfather, Charles? Is he with you? Grand is in Connemara. He got his money to me. Then he's great up in his grave. Standing up? And why not? He lies against no man. God rest his soul. Granny's gone to Rena Fairchild, dead. And because of her great kindness to you three gentlemen, she commissioned me to deliver to you her most precious treasure. Well, really? What is it? Glory to be sent. It's what? Her granny wanted you to be her dad. She was a little boy trying to take care of her. She had none. Then past none, but she was a baby. No, but we, we, we don't know anything about raising a little girl. Oh, she's a smart one, gentlemen. But you don't know she'll teach you. Right at the news, gentlemen. Oh, good night, man. It's a dream of the woman of us. Some of the kids will leave your coat for your button to go there. Thank you, but we have a tailor. Ah, but there's no love in the thread in the middle of a tree. My dear child, please, please. It's, it's quite impossible. I, I'm sorry. I should have known. You don't want to. Oh, it isn't that so. It's, 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 it's simply that, uh, well... Oh, poor gentleman. Don't you always stand. That's the you This is something you can do, or get them a few dollars or so. Hey, there is something you can do. For the blasphemous thought, I'm thinking, you can pay for me for. Tell me, lady. Uh, Frederick? Yes, Mr. Sandler? No, a competent butler would have spared us all that. Yes, sir. I'm begging your pardon, the university president is here again. Uh, Mr. Appleby? Oh, come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. Oh, yes, sir. Mr. It's been a terrible mistake. Mistake? I knew we should have held off with that publicity. Now, what's the matter with the publicity? You think it's fine. But, gentlemen, the deed to the fair size of state. The deed you turned over to me is not the deed to the fair size of state. Here, look at it. What are you talking about? We bought that property from we the fair size years ago. This deed is for a green out fair size property on the other side of town. Ten acres of grassland. What is the newspaper here? Now, 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 no. I'll have it straightened out immediately. Yes. Oh, I hope so, Mr. Pindis. He said I'd just printing another front page story, and it would be most embarrassing if you to just... Mr. Appleby, I'll see that you get the right read in the morning. Yes, yes, of course. Of course, I... I... Good afternoon, gentlemen. Yeah, you have yet... You told us for years you had that deed. Yes, I know, I know, but giving the university ten acres of swap. You realize what Badger can do to us? He'll be hooted out of town. Get back, you won't find out about it. You'll buy it right now. You'll buy it. From who? From Wiener, of course. I'll cable it. Ah, Wiener's dead, you lame brain. <laughs> well, then, the air. Hey, she's the air. That little girl. And you sent her away. All right. I did nothing against the I'll argue about it later now. But right now we've got to find her. Does it? Get the carriage. Look at poor Gavin. Granny's house. It's falling to pieces. I yeah, know. Yeah. There's nothing left but to take out your American citizenship and go on the old age pension. Is it charity or supporting the same that you need? So we can't live in this celebrity with old Savannah. I know, I know. Poor oh, Savannah, I'm a failure. What will you do? Feel a girl. I'll do it. I'll go to work. Oh, no, no. I will, I will. I'll get it out. 
But it would be like I was playing there, slavery. Oh, I feel like Simon was in. Well, then there's no left but to tell this old place. Tell it. Tell it, Granny. Tell it. Don't you ever. Oh, Gavin, look. That old tree. Hmm? What about that old tree? What is the body? Stories with an old tree. The good tree is the lesser kind. Glory to you, tell him to satisfy our What are you going to do? Send them right out, Daddy. I'm going to call them for Yes, sir. Yes. The tree to be the apple's mouth. It's the moon on the moon. Starting right, there in the ground. The black must be in the sky. I, uh, I don't see nothing, my lady. Not a solitary fairy. If you need to be forgotten, they're dead. Living so long in the street of mine. Yes, yes, of course. Daddy, daddy, big and small. Cut me through and walk his car. Come out and from your fairy days and get some troubles all away. Oh, please, the fairy, please come out. I need your help so bad. I know you're only your feet because Grand is good to work. Oh, please come out. I'm going to find them. But what more can I do, you absolutely see? I'm going to come out where I've been at. I'm only a mercy. I've got you to do it. I'm a... It's a dad and no... Yes, 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 yes. No, not the theory. It's a gentleman. But it's a damn piece of trouble. It's a gentleman. Oh, it's a little bit like a lady to run. I didn't expect it to stay there. Hey, what have you come here for? You've got to see her. Don't you apologize, Sheila. To take your home and live with us. Oh, glory, glory. Yeah, then you will, Tom. Oh, yes, yes. Who could I say that? Well, you wouldn't be able to make it a mistake. Did you really have to come through? Well, I couldn't go without the dragon. He's me and got it. Well, 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 then. I promised Tom you I'd take care of him. But that is a very familiar thing. You might have waited till they caught me out of my lady. Yeah, bring her back to the place. Hmm. Where do you visit in New York, sir? <laughs> if there is any of you in them branches, I hope you know what you're doing. Now well, speak up, Jimmy, speak up. Did you see good watching, gentlemen? Ah, where are you going over? We have to have the legal guardian for Sheila O'Banahan. Good. What does she have to say about her? Yes, I did You should have heard her telling what how much she loves her. And what about the two to be in his estate? None of them, sir. Judge the range that, too. The child gets the $50,000, which we will hold in trust for her, and the property's ours, turn over to the university. There. Here's the booth. Yeah, and I think this calls for the two. To our dear, the limited reward, uh... What's the name again? Sheila. Sheila. Oh, yes, yes, Sheila. Long live Sheila. Yeah, but not to be yet. I've wired Miss Marlowe to in Philadelphia. They'll be glad to enroll the child any time we wish. That's right. The best place for us. Yeah, for me, too. I'm sick of going around with a silly grin in the face just because the kid wants me to look happy all the time. Come in. Come in. I've had the honor to announce her most powerful inspection. Miss Sheila O'Donnell. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you look very nice, my dear. That a new dress? So this brown new, a dozen bottles. And you could see the other four chicken boxes. Four parts to you. Oh, five or dozen, five. Uh, I hope you took them all on approval. Oh, but I do approve, I do. A dozen for me and the I knew it. Wouldn't you see me more? A dozen pounds. Is that really cool? No, no, that, that's not a doll's house, my dear. That's the model of a big theater. The biggest in the country, entirely faced with marble. Yes. And if it hadn't been for you, she would have never do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's going to be built on your granny's plate, and you're going to make a lot of money out of it. Oh, granny's plate? Mm-hmm. And this is the paper that gave us the right to sell it. Yes, it's a wonderful sale of Gordon's side of It's a nice thing to be one of the men. Grand is black money. Yes, yeah, he wished to be a broad, smooth road and 
we have had to be clairvoyant. Yes, that one horse whip should be did all right by us. <laughs> one horned whip? Uh-huh. Not the one horned whip of the Bhagavad Gita. Yes, 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 Bhagavad Gita. Oh, no, no. Then it wasn't a blessing. It was a curse of the most terrible old witch in all Ireland. Oh, well, you wish me a million dollars, Gita, and I've got it. Oh, the poor, poor darling. I must take the curse off of you. Then I'll get down. You'll get down. Come on. Tomorrow, my dear, huh? Come on, then, now. Just tell me. No, now, she will have to be sensible about you. I am, I am. Oh, you see, just puffing on the edge of my... Oh, my head. That's good. Right now, cross your fingers for a side way to stay. Cross me one horn, but I call you forth and command you to take the curse off of this dangerous house. I, Sheila, stand off with Michael, we or Manahan, we tell now, break out with a spell on the doctor. The banker and the judge lie back in to the back of our knees. He's gone. His eyes, Sheila, has stopped. There. That's all the good, Jackie. Now, if you excuse me, I'll get a clean, clean sign. Oh, Sheila, you're taking that paper. The paper is the paper that Jackie told me about, didn't you? Yes, but you've got to have it to build a big river. I'm sorry. We're going to have to go to the other for the first time. Why? You only need to be like the to be in the Well, this is your fine better than this. Let's suppose I've got my lady. A theater and a piece of paper. I don't just want to give you a lot of money to grant it. Why? To be just the for the beast. A theater for the beast? Yes. All she says is now. I see my lady doesn't know all the last thing about this house. I don't know anything. Oh, do I? Oh, God, I'm waiting. Maybe what did the doctor want to walk to the table? Now, now, that's it. You keep it in a big place, can you? I keep it in a book. Come on. Well, 
That's what Sheila said, isn't it? Well, that's, that's, that's why she can't uh, have the tree moved, isn't it? Well, 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 well. Well, I've got the solution. Just now, while I was at the bank, a parade went by. Dugan's Lilliputians are in town. They'll be at the Vaudeville House all week. Thirty perfect midgets for the band. And I'll hire them. You what? Yeah. I've told Dugan exactly what to say. So tonight, right after dinner, you and I and Sheila are taking a walk to the Fairchild Estate. Look. Look, Sheila. A three-quarters moon. Do you know what that means? Yes, it's the famous moon of the little folk. And it's just getting nice for them to be gallivanting. Well, that's why we thought it would be nice to walk over here, Sheila, to the oak tree. There's no telling what we might see. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where, where's O'Gavin? Wasn't he coming with us? I, I'm afraid O'Gavin is a bit indisposed. He, he said he got lost in your cellar. Oh, Sheila, that man. That man's nothing but a drunken old... That's enough, Jim, that's enough, that's enough. I, I told him where he'd be. He said he'd follow us to the table. Well, there's no need to wait. Now, let's start looking for the fairy, huh? So close your eyes, everyone. Pooping, pooping, the apple small. Ace the blooming on my knees. Starring rise, fall my glory. The last must ruin the cellar. You can open your eyes now. You can. Look, the tree. In your tree. Music. I hear music. George Watson, Your Honor, that I was. Ah. We met up with you at the edge of the Fairchild Estate, 
And seeing as how they were the little folks searching down the road, I invited them to join me at Murphy's Liquor Emporium. And they went with you. The fairies went with you. Well, sir, there we were on our way. When one of them, a North of Ireland runt named Dugan, passed a certain remark about me, dear Uncle Seamus, now deceased and departed. Will you kindly get to the point? Naturally, I remarked right back at him and doubled it. And then, then this pusillanimous lump told me to shut up, or he'd knock me kneecaps off. Now, there was where I made my mistake. They all fell upon me, thousands of them. I was up to me belt buckle and fairies. You were up to your belt buckle and whiskey. Oh, me little, oh, please, this thing. Here, here. Just who are you, little girl? Do you remember me, Judge Watson? Sheila O'Monaghan. Oh, yes, of course. The little Irish girl. And now that she's here, Your Honor, she'll tell you I did see the fairies last night. Oh, yes, sir. A whole tree full of them. Now, just a minute. Just a minute. Well, more visitors. Come in, Mr. Trumbull. Doctor, Mr. Finley. How are you, sir? How, How are you, Your Honor? I hope you'll excuse us. We just came to get the little girl. But, gentlemen, oh, Gavin's in trouble. His excellency doesn't believe that we saw the fairies last night. Oh, Sheila, we mustn't interrupt the court. But I'm just asking you that you tell the judge what you saw with your own eyes. You did see the fairies last night. You did. Sheila, dear, what difference does it make? But don't you see what you're doing? You're sending old Gavin to prison for telling the truth. Well, why don't you speak? Gentlemen, did you see fairies last night? Or did you not? Sheila, my dear, it, it was just a sort of a game, my dear. Yes, dear, just a, just a little game. Then you don't believe. And after you saw them leaving the tree. Never mind, darling. Never mind, my lady. But there must be fairies. There must. I couldn't live if there weren't. I wouldn't want to. Sheila? Yes, Your Excellency. I'm here, child. Here to the window. Yes. You too, old Evan. Yes, Your Excellency. Are those the fairies you saw? The little people out there in the prison yard. The little folks, they're here, a miracle. But they're not fairies, Sheila. They're midgets. Dugan's midgets from the vaudeville theater. But, Davin. It's your just right, my lady. Midgets. Just humans, darling, who never grew up. And me swearing to a pixies I might talk with. And if they're humans, the real fairies are still in my trees. We are going to cut it down and kill them all. Sheila, my dear, we did it only to make you happy. Make me happy? You make me wish I were dead. They'll have released the midgets. The case is dismissed. Well, thank you very much, Your Honor. I'm not through with you. I want to see all of you right away in my chamber. And that's what they've done to her, Your Honor. And that's why I see their three contemptible low-down weasels. Are you drunken... Judge, I demand that Devon be thrown out. Before you do any demanding, Mr. Findlay, I suggest you answer his accusations. Did you hire Dugan's midget? Yes, but only... And to... second, is it true or not that you brought this child into your home only to acquire her property? Oh, to your honor, please, now, but... Well, Dr. Gaunt... Yes, uh, yes, it's true. It's true. We were in a difficult situation, and, well, it seems the simplest solution. But we've changed since he came to us. I can't explain it, except we've, we've never heard a little girl laugh before of them, or waited for a good night kiss, frightened to death she might forget it. <laughs> you couldn't take her away from us now, Judge. Why, we wouldn't be able to just... Well, hang it, man, we love her. How can you love me, dressing up little humans to pretend that they were fairies? But Sheila, we do love you. You're the only one we've ever loved. Except your grandmother. Now, please, tell Judge Watson that you want to stay with us. And I'll buy you a pony, Sheila. A nice red pony. A red pony. You can't buy love for pounds and pence. I was so happy last night. I thought that you believed in the fairies. In how they'd help you get rid of your sinful old money. And lead you into heaven. But it's too late. I can't go back with you. You won't have to, Sheila. Mr. Finley, Dr. Gaunt, Mr. Trumbull. Consider yourselves discharged as the child's guardian. Oh, but Judge... Hey, yes, sir? Get the matron. We'll arrange to commit the child to the state home for office. Oh, no, no. I won't go. I won't go. This is absurd, Your Honor. She has plenty of money, the money we paid for her property. And I'm not such a penny yet. Not a penny. Your Honor, she's a monahan. She can't go to an institution. Mario Davin, there's no alternative. Yes, sir. Oh, look at you. 
three wise men. After what you've done, it's you who should be put in an institution to rot behind bars for the rest of your selfish lives. Three wise men. Three wise fools. That'll be enough of that. Oh, Devon, help me, please. Oh, Devon, help me. No alternative, he says, darling. Oh, over me dead body there, ain't Come on, me lady, run, run. Stop, stop, stop. stop. You'll never stop. You'll never stop. Run, me lady, run, run, run. Come on. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In just a moment, Margaret O'Brien, Lionel Barrymore... Lewis Stone and Edward Arnold will return in Three Wise Fools. Our guest tonight is proof that miracles can and do happen in Hollywood. She's lovely Janet Lee, who at the age of 19 has been chosen for one of the most important screen roles of the year. In Metro Golden Mare, The Romance of Rosie Rich. Won't you give us a few highlights of your success story, Janet? And don't be modest. Well, I really haven't had a chance to catch my breath yet, Mr. Keeley. Everything happened so fast. First came my contract, the studio, and then my first picture role in a romantic drama of the period following the Civil War. And, well, you know who the hero is, Mr. Keeley, so you understand why I can hardly believe my good luck to be playing opposite him. The popular Van Johnson. And he has the most versatile role of his career in that picture, a two-fisted fighting man. Oh, Van did some fine singing, too. American folk songs to his own guitar accompaniment. Oh, it was also fun to work with such a famous member of the cast as Thomas Mitchell. A truly splendid character actor. How did you like going on location for the romance of Rosie Ridge in the high Sierra? Oh, it was rugged, but it was beautiful up there. No contact with the outside world for, for two weeks, so I had to be sure to pack carefully. Oh, and I know Mr. Kennedy would be interested to hear of one suggestion I got over and over again. I'm uh, thinking of a certain beauty soap that's rather popular in Hollywood, Miss Lee. <laughs> yes, Mr. Kennedy. Everyone said... Be sure to take a supply of Lux Toilet Soap. As though I forget my daily complexion care. I've been using Lux Toilet Soap for a long time, you know. Maybe that's one reason the studio didn't even make a screen test of you, Miss Lee. Any cameraman knows a lovely Lux complexion always photographed like a charm. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Hollywood stars and starlets know how effective Lux Toilet Soap care can be. The rich, fragrant lather makes Lux Toilet Soap their favorite bath soap, too. It's truly Hollywood's own beauty soap. Thanks for being here tonight, Miss Janet Lee. All good wishes in your bright new career. Here's your producer, William Keeley. Act three of Three Wise Fools, starring Margaret O'Brien as Sheila, Lionel Barrymore as Gaunt, Lewis Stone as Trumbull, and Edward Arnold as Finley. Several hours have passed, but neither the police nor the frantic efforts of the three old bachelors have revealed any trace of Sheila and O'Davin. Slipping through town, the runaways have halted at an iron front gate. On it, a bronze plaque reads, St. Mary's Convent. But darling, darling, you can't. You can't enter a convent. Mind is made up, O'Davin. I'm denouncing the world. Sure, it is nothing but a great ball of news to life. But we could run away, my lady. Out west. Kentucky. Or, or Maine. We'll become Indians. No, Davin. Thank you, but no. He places in a convent. What more can I do with me wasted life? To let him cut off his hair and have done with it. Oh, what's to become of me? Left to die in a drunken grave. Oh, me poor, poor man. But you've got to be brave. I'll be praying for you every second beat. Oh, worry, worry, worry. He promised me you'll have no more dealings with Mr. Kildaren's Irish whiskey. Not a simple fool. Not a whiff. Then go, Davin. Go now. And God keep you. What time is it now, Richard? It's ten minutes to ten. And in five minutes, it'll be five minutes at ten. 
And if you ask me once more, I'll ram that clock right down your throat. Well, I can't help it. I'm worried. Oh, You're I'll worried. Huh. If it hadn't been for you and your midget flea circus, Sheila'd still be here. Oh, huh? sure. Blame me. Everything, anytime anything happens around here, it's oh, my fault. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. For 40 years, yeah. I've listened to your yapping. I'm getting tired of it. All right, I'll leave this house tomorrow. Good. I can't wait to get your room fumigated. Gentlemen, Gentlemen she insists on seeing you. Who insists on seeing us? I do. Oh. See you, I will. I insist to marry Bridget from the convent. I come for Sheila's clothes. Oh, you found her. She found us, poor little tight. Oh, thank him, she says. Just do you have influence in this town? Help us get her back, please. I hope you'll never get her back. I just been to see Judge Watson. There's a fine boarding school upstate. I'm taking her there myself tomorrow. So send off your man to fetch her clothes. Get her clothes, Frederick? Yes, sir. The three biggest men in this town, are you? The three blackest sinners. We tried to buy the property back, but they've already started to clear the land. I know all about it. What we did was wrong. Now, we know that. And what do you know of the mind of a child? Denying her the fairies. Calling them superstitions. Would you be denying Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and the Stork? You took everything from her she believed in. And now she wants to die. But surely there's something we can do. The only thing I know is to save that tree. But that's impossible. Is it? Before I let them cut it down, I'd nail myself to the trunk and make them cut me down with it. Ah, but you won't do anything. You just haven't got the courage or the love. I'll wait in the carriage for the child. Hello, Acme Contracting Company. Hello, hello, Mr. Johnson. This is Quimby. Yeah, you got that ground clear, Jeff? That's just it, Mr. Johnson. It's a big old tree. When we came to work this morning, he was chained to it. What are you talking about? Dr. God, he changed himself to the tree. We can't cut it down. Yeah, but you've got to cut it down. Wait, wait, I'll be out there in ten minutes. Hey, Sam, get hold of Appleby at the university right away. <laughs> Take care of Dr. Gordon. Oh, you can, can you? Yes. Now, what's the idea of chaining yourself to this tree? So you can't cut it down, that's why. But we've got to cut it down. we got to clear the property, don't we? You're not cutting down this tree. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, oh, Dr. Gordon. What on earth is the matter? Who came you to the tree? He did it himself, Mr. Rappel. You are not cutting down this tree. But, Doctor, people would think you're crazy. You'd be rude. Come on, open the bad lock. Where's the key? I gave it to a gopher. <laughs> this property belongs to the university. I'll call the police. Well, go ahead. You start to death. Well, then tell him the flat foot to bring me a sandwich. <laughs> I'll tell him. Now, will you guys get back to work? Then I'll have a trick in my head. Oh, Jim! I told him it's another trick. Oh, where, where is she? Is Sheila here yet? Here? So you can hurt her again? I don't want to hurt her. I'm just trying to save her tree. Well, then, then you believe? Would I be doing this if I didn't? Look me in the eye. Do you believe in fairies? Yes or no? No. So I was right. It is a deception. Yes, 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 yes. yes. It's a deception, yes. But, you, but don't you see? I'm trying to give that child a faith again. Now stay here, old Davin. Help me convince her. She's coming here. I sent Frederick to the convent. I shall not put yourself after what you've done to her. Then you get her yourself. You've got to now. Now, to be, before they take her out of town. I'll try and hurry, 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 hurry. Well, 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 Dr. God. Mr. Badger, what do you want, you buzzard? <laughs> Always said you'd wind up in chains. Yes. Where are your accomplices? Where's Finley and Trumbull? I don't know. Stand by, boys. Take down everything he says. We yes. will, boys. You are my reporters, man. Oh, Mr. Appleby's here, too, I see. I brought the policeman, Doctor. Now, unless you give us a key to that padlock, we'll cut you loose with a hacksaw. Where's that key? Go ask the gopher. <laughs> oh, come on, Doc. What's the idea? You wouldn't understand, you pot-bellied pencil pusher. Just give us one reason, one little reason for all this nonsense. I have chained myself to this tree because it's the home of the fairies. What the... <laughs> the fairies? What, what, what fairies? really believe that, Gorse? I don't see any fairies. Well, neither do I. But they're in the tree, all right. Hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. 
I'll take care of this. Well, Mr. James Trumbull. Oh, oh, I hate to say this, Mr. Trumbull, but I do believe Dr. Gaunt has lost his mind. Save your breath, Jim. You wouldn't believe in fairies if I showed you their birth certificate. Richard. Richard, what you're doing is a wonderful thing, but it won't save the tree. I know that. What's the good of it, then? Well, at least it may restore her belief in... Well, it's not in fairies, but at least in human beings. But Sheila's gone, hasn't she? I sent a diamond for her. If he brings her here, she'll realize that at least one of us hasn't let her down. Oh, I see, I see. You mean that no one here believes in fairies but you? None of these good people? Jim, Jim, I love you. Thanks, thanks. Well then, Doctor, I'm standing here with you until they dynamite us out. That's a great idea. Now, but I, I guess we better try to hack off first. Well, Mr. Trumbull, don't tell me you believe in fairies. Your skepticism does you a little justice, Mr. Badger. The manifestations of the supernatural have been known throughout the ages. Hallelujah. I get that, Charlie, word for word. Uh, tell us more now, like, well, uh, like, what do fairies eat? Mm, honey, of course. Honey and garlic. <laughs> and, uh, what do they drink? Grasshoppers, milk, and sap. You sap. <laughs> got to do it. Uh, we, we've got to put on an act for it. I know, I know, I know, I know. Look, look, Richard. Up on that limb. There. Five of them. Five pink fairies. <laughs> Imagine. And they're all strumming their hearts. Hearts? Well, can't you hear them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course I can. Yeah, I, I can hear them as well as you can. <laughs> well, Sheila, hello, my dear. Good morning. Oh, Darren, you can see the fairies and I can't. Ah, but you will, my lady. You will. And look, look, Doctor. There's another group. And they're eating oatmeal. Oatmeal? Nonsense. That's buttercup, Marty. <laughs> do they believe, oh, Darren? Do they really believe? They do indeed, my lady. Oh, Sheila, darling, Sheila. You do believe. You do believe. Can you forgive us, my dear? Can you? Oh, I love you. I do love you. Ah, uh-huh. now don't cry, Sheila. Please don't cry now. I, I won't. Where's Mister Finley? Well, we don't know, Sheila. Hey, there he is, conniving over yonder with Mister Appleby. Why isn't he with you, protecting the tree? I don't know the overstuffed miser. I'll take care of him. Excuse me, my lady. I'm about to beat up on the first millionaire. All right, boys, get those stars in action. Okay. Well, chains or no chains, we won't touch any. Come on, stand aside over here. Come on. Oh, no, no. Please don't cut it down. Please don't. Hey, you better take her, Mr. Badger. Oh, no, no. Don't cut it down. The fairies, he'll kill them all. Sheila, Sheila, dear. Uh, let the tree alone. It's all this. The tree can stand. What did he say? <laughs> Look what I've got. A check. A check for a million dollars. A million dollars. Mr. Finley, sell us back this property, he said, and I'll give you a million dollars. Ted, Ted did that. So I accept it, naturally. A million dollars, naturally. We'll make it into a park, he said. Then the tree can stand forever. Not just a park. Simply park. That's part of the deal, Appleby. Mr. Finley. You gave your last million dollars to save the tree. Well, why not? Oh, Ted, Ted. Sheila's forgiven us, Ted. Can you? No, I guess I'd better. Looks like you two will have to take some care of me from now on. Oh, was there ever such happiness? And we have the fairies to thank for it. The glorious little creatures. But I wish I could see them like you do. Show them to her, Ted. Show them to her. See, yeah. Hmm? Well, that's second well, place. Uh, oh, yes, why, certainly. Now concentrate, Sheila. They're right up there on the... Well, of course you can't see them. The word, Sheila. The incantation. Oh, 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 you bet they are, darling. Right in the middle of Finley Park. The 
curtain falls on a splendid performance from our four stars. And here they are at the footlights. Margaret O'Brien, Lionel Barrymore, Lewis Stone, and Edward Arnold. Sure, and it's a fine accounting you gave of yourself, Margaret, me darling. Excuse my thank you, Mr. Keeley. You know, uh, you almost have me seeing those little people myself. <laughs> uh, what does a leprechaun look like, Margaret? Oh, they have big ears and pointy turn up noses. <laughs> Can you box for that for sure? Well, of course, they really aren't such people. Oh, maybe they are. <laughs> As you said yourself, what makes that window blind go and fly up when nobody's around? Could be the sound effects, man. <laughs> right, Barter. And I can see you're right about another thing, too. Lux toilet soap. I'm sure that nice, smooth complexion means you use it regularly. Oh, I do. I use Lux soap every single day of my life. And that's more evidence that you're a very wise and up-to-date young lady. Well, you know, Bill, Margaret's had is another skill to her many talents out at Metro Golden Mare. So I understand. Learning the ballet for her newest picture, The Unfinished Dance. Well, that's quite an accomplishment, Margaret. Was it difficult? No, but in the middle of making the picture, I hurt my toe and couldn't dance. Oh. Well, is that why they call us The Unfinished Dance? <laughs> no. Oh, why, why do they? We'd have to go to the theater and find out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, coming back to your toe, Margaret, did it mean that you couldn't uh, dance in the ballet? No. Mr. Paskinac, the producer, promised me I could be in the ballet. So he postponed shooting it until my toe healed. Ah, well, Margaret, you must never break your promise to a little girl. Did you ever dance ballet, Mr. Barrymore? No. No, no. <laughs> no, no I'm afraid I'm hardly the type. Did you ever toe dance, Mr. Arnold? Uh, only on other people's toes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about his dancing, Margaret, but Mr. Arnold gives a fine performance for MGM in The Huckster. Uh, thank you, Bill. And speaking of pictures, what are you doing on Lux next Monday night? We're fortunate in having a delightful and nostalgic play in 20th Century Fox's Margie, starring Gene Crane and Glenn Langan in their original screen roles. Margie is a warmly sympathetic story of teenage romance. It's trials and triumphs, joys and heartaches. A play that's filled with the spirit of youth and humor and brightened by the lilting tunes of the 20s. I love Margie, Mr. Keeley. And I'm sure your audience will, too. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks for a wonderful evening. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, Join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Gene Crane and Glenn Langan in Margie. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Margie with Gene Crane and Glenn Langan. Stay tuned for my friend Irma, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.